I'm an American. I'm a, you know what I'm saying? You can call me a black American, but I'm an American. When I competed in the, in the Olympics, they didn't say fighting uh, an African American. They said uh, that American that's fighting out of the red corner or out the blue corner. I love America. I love this country. See what he can do in the midst of unbelievers on the leading edge with his word, his power, his grace, and his mercy. For God's sakes, we're Lutheran. This is what we know. Wittenberg Project. Ah. Project. We back. Yo. With Cam. Lex here. Um, what up? We're going to have just an honest conversation. Or oh, we change topics. Okay. So this is a, a true conversation between, between us in regards to this. But I want to tell everybody happy 4th of July uh, to our servicemen, to citizens, to happy 4th of July in general, you know. So currently in uh, the Christian sphere, you know, there's a lot of talk about nationalism. There's a lot of talk about things of that nature, which kind of ties into the 4th of July and things of that nature, you know. Um, and I'll be honest, as two, two black men, you know, it's a unique space for us in a mm -hmm. sense, you know. So a lot of times you'll see, um, you'll see two extremes. You'll see the... Uh, how can I put it, put it nicely? Uh, the non-pride side and the too prideful side. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Or we, could, or we could use blunt terms and say we have the quote-unquote super woke side or we have the Nazi racist type side of, on the side of the equation. Uh-oh. He said woke. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, nah, no, no, but that's, that's what they're called. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use the, the terms that are actually out there in the playing field. You know? Right, right. So Especially, well, I don't know if you guys know, Cam um, has been in the military, right? Yes, yes, sir. So I thought this Eight would be years. a great conversation to have with somebody who's represented our country. And me, somebody who lives here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so um, one of the things that I, I've been thinking about lately in regards to um, the black community's faithfulness to Christ. In uh, sense, right? Uh -huh. Hey, I'll tie it all together. And I want your thoughts on it, Okay. So when it comes to the 4th of July, a lot of people, especially in our demographics, are starting to be not really, well, beyond that, there's a poll that came out recently where it shows that majority of Americans really aren't proud or um, patriotic in a sense, not in the, the radical sense, but, you know, about, about the country in a sense. Yeah. You know, and a lot of that includes people of our demographic, of our race, our culture, you know. Um, what I've been thinking about is us not really being uh proud or wanting to represent america or being anti the fourth of july or you know the system in a sense it kind of is like a spit in our ancestors face in a sense and i say that because of this america is the country that oppressed people um immigrants refugees all flee to for various reasons mm. and the reason we don't need to get into but the reason was constructed and built by our ancestors. So the reason why people see us as this way, and the reason why people view it as a land of opportunities, a lot is built of that is built on the backs of our struggle, of us persevering, us fighting through racism in our faith, forgiving and moving forward in that sense, mm -hmm. which kind of implements and shows how the country is, have it progressed compared to other nations in the world. Now, I'm not saying that racism doesn't exist. I'm not saying things can't get better or things of that nature. But for us not to act as if the 4th of July or this country is some vile, demonic place that we have nothing to be proud of kind of dismisses those accomplishments, those achievements of our ancestors throughout the years. So it puts me in a unique place because a lot of that, I know this is a religious channel, not a political channel. But I think it's tied together because a lot of that perseverance is due to the black community's faith in Christ in regards oh, yeah. to our, for, our forgetful, our, you know, us being forgiving, us working through it, us trusting in him to help us get past these situations. And a lot of progress has been made. Now, for the people on one side, I'm not going to say everything's honky dory, everything's beautiful. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is progress has been made and. We have to acknowledge that, and a lot of that is America. I would like your thoughts, your thoughts. Yes, yes, for sure. 
no, definitely progress has been made. And um, and it, what's interesting is that uh, throughout our history, it's people who have followed Christ, who have been like the pioneers um, or on the front lines of that progress, um, dating back to, you know, the time of the colonies. Um, you had you had people who were um, who were, um, you know, uh, coming over to America for their religious freedom. And then um, they would protest against, you know, what was happening to uh, the Native Americans here, what was happening to um, uh, the uh, the slaves from Africa. And they would they would uh, they would do that because they were in a place where they were free to do that without fear. Of, well, free of retribution from the government, but um, it still took a lot of courage for them to do. But we would not have the progress that we have without these Christians um, being like mostly mostly the abolitionists were Christian, you know. Um, yeah, so I think that, um, I think that it's good for us to just, just to, instead, instead of vilifying everything our country does, like you said, um, acknowledge that progress that has been made for sure. Yeah. Right. And I, I, but I also think that it's a sense of pride for us. Yeah. Acknowledging that when people have a hard time in other countries or people are being oppressed and this and that, one of the first places they're trying to go is America. One yep. of the first place they go, and I know even during slavery and stuff, we we'll quote, quote on, uh, Jim Crow, the land of opportunity, golden streets, and this, you know, and things weren't like that. Right. Things weren't like that. But still, the the notion of what they're looking for, they find here, and a lot of that is on our ancestors' backs. It's the aspect of we fought for this, we persevered through this, we persevered so much. We have radical groups like the LGBT, all the people piggybacking and trying to use all of our accomplishments to get their freedoms in that sense. Now, mm -hmm. that kind of shows that, man, like it's possible to change things here and not saying what they want to change for is good or bad. But I'm saying when you see a, a, a winning game plan or something that has caused change, well, let's try to implement that to get what we want, even if their stands isn't cool or isn't okay right you know so it, it's just it's just odd to me that i mean because like i grew up as a kid who missed school when the day malcolm x movie came out you know what i'm saying like right you know, you're not going to school today you're going to movie you're about to watch malcolm x right you know i listen to malcolm x speeches still yeah I, it, which you know is he, he's no he's nowhere near real quick he's nowhere near as popular in the states as, as mlk is you know but right. but but yeah go ahead go ahead no, Sorry. no, 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 it's open conversation, you know what I'm saying? Right, so, right. but it's just, I do think that the purple diet is a unique situation, and a lot of people who shun it or talk bad about it, I hate to be one of these ultra far right people that will go somewhere else. I'm not saying that, you know, right? But that option is open to people, you know what I'm saying? Like, but in the back of our mind, we know that, yo, a lot of places don't have the freedoms we have here. Or if they do, they don't have the, pro the the progress that has been made here on our backs in other places. I saw this video by uh, Floyd Mayweather, okay. which kind of got me thinking this. And okay. I'm not saying he's the sharpest tool in the shed. Not yeah. saying that at all, okay? Well, I am saying he has a point. He mentioned how, um, I guess someone called him African-American. He said, no, I'm American. Mm. And he was like, when I fought in the Olympics, they didn't say go get the African-American to fight for African-Americans. It was go get the American. I was recognized globally as an American. And the truth is, we're just as much American as anybody else. You know, because mm -hmm. truth is, it's a lot of oppression in the world. We like, to, we like to talk about it as if it's just here or was just here. When, I mean, you're more worldly traveled than I am. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. But maybe you could maybe you can say if I'm wrong or right, but in almost majority of countries, there's some group of people who felt wronged by that country or some of that nature, but they still rep that country. Yeah. I said I could be wrong, but when I think of the Aborigines, I think of you know, I think of people who have it hard, you know. They admit it's hard, but I don't think that they made as much progress as we have here, where the system that we're, we're saying is so bad we've used to gain what we have gained in a sense you know what i'm saying so 
I mean, what would you say the fourth means to you? Mm. Hey, I'm listening. I'm going to turn the stand on real fast. I'm listening. I can hear you talk. Okay, no, no, for sure. No, that's a really, really good question. Um, When I think of the fourth, I think of, you know, um, way back in 1776, but I also think about um, the independence and freedom that we have um, is a result of bloodshed. You know, it's like how you hear people say freedom isn't free. Um, people fought blood, sweat, and tears for what is freedom that we have. And so... Um, and it was a lot of, No, no, not sorry for interrupting. Yeah, yeah. Much of that blood was African-American blood. Yeah. Black blood, you know what I'm saying? So keep going. Yes, sir. So... For me, July Fourth, I would say it is a it's it's a complicated day for me to be honest. However, um, I think that there is a lot of respect and 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 good that is owed to um, our government because me and my family, like the Air Force, is all I've known since I was 18. I'm 40. My wife's active in the Air Force. Ah, you're kind of old, man. <laughs> Don't even listen, listen. Don't don't make me do it. Don't make me do it. Chill, man. Chill. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> don't make me do it. Nah, nah. Um, young boy, I'm a young boy. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, we've been blessed, man. Like it ain't always been completely easy all the time. Like it's rough sometimes. It's been rough. Uh, I had I saw some rough moments in war, but like, you know, like for example, I you know I went to Afghanistan. I went to Iraq, but. Just that little bit of time I spent in that country, I was able to relate to he, people here in D.C. who are of Afghan descent. And they're like, oh, you've been in my country. I'm like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they're like, wow. So it's like the good and the bad, you have to weigh equally. You know what I mean? And I think I think that um, I think that um, July 4th was the start, I think, of of America's freedom and independence and the more the more people got free and the more people meditated on what America really stood for, it took time. But then later on, other people, groups within America were like, you know what? This is, this is our constitution. This is what we were based on. We need those rights too, right? right. And so the fight fight continues. So, yeah. And that was the progress I was talking about, you know? Yeah. And a lot of that progress was made, as I mentioned before, that just sounds like a broken record, because of our ancestors, in a sense. Yeah. So for... For me, in a sense of when I look at it, if I'm going to be Mr. Anti Fourth of July, where it's like, oh, this country, this, 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 I, it, to me personally, it almost seems as if I'm minimizing what our ancestors went through to get to where we are today. You know, in that sense, you know, like you hear talks of um, what's that word called? Uh, I can't, I can't think of it. Where we get money. Reparations. <laughs> Reparations. Yeah, 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 yeah. You hear talks of that. You hear talks of um, people got a head start. Uh, black people didn't get a chance to um, s- succeed or grow at the same pace. They were held back. And all of that has truth to it. You know? On the same note, it's like, okay. Put this way. I'm the type of person where if... All this is against me, and I still make make a way. I'm gonna say, yeah, I still did it though. I'm not saying right. that I should have had to go through these obstacles. These obstacles weren't there, or they sh- should not have been there, or they should have been there. They were there, and we were able to grow and proceed through there. My ancestors fighting, dying, living, struggling, striving throughout it. I applaud that, and then I realized that. The system, that's not saying the American government system is perfect at all, but they use those channels. Yeah. Like the slaves, people can like uh, Abraham Lincoln or not. Right. That's my point. You know, people can say he signed it for whatever reason they want to say he signed it for. But per the way our system set up, it was signed that slaves were free. That our system had a way for that to get implemented, and it did get implemented Okay, I have to acknowledge that. That's, that is some progress for whatever reason. So I look at July 4th, I get it. People are like saying, you're celebrating the people who founded the country who ended up enslaving your people. But the history doesn't stop right there. 
like history keeps going where it's like, yeah, that, that is true. And our people marched, protested, got lynched, got hung. And they did all that for us to be here where we are today. They made you know, so, sacrifices. Yeah. 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 So I'm not saying that a person has to be all gung ho or this and that, but I do think that there is some pride that should come with the 4th of July in a sense. And because this is a religious channel. Also, when I look at it, the faith of our ancestors is a big reason why people don't really give us credit for being the faithful Christians and followers of Christ we have historically. Oh, yeah. Now, now oh, don't yeah. get me wrong. I'm more of a Malcolm X than a Martin Luther King, meaning that, like, yo, you, you stick a dog on me, I'm going to kill that dog. Right. And I'm going to jail. I'm not saying I'm not. You know what I'm saying? But and I'm not bashing his approach. What I'm saying is, is in general, that forgiveness didn't have, there, there's a good chance it does, didn't have to come. You know what I'm saying? Like people just could have been like, no, this is not possible. Mm. You know, but mm -hmm. yeah, through our faith and this that nature, which some people disagree with or don't, don't support, but I'm a Christian. I, I, I'm a, celebrating that strong faith they had right. to try to reconcile and try to move forward. Right. Because even the most most anti-America, they won't word it that way, but let's be honest, you know, they wouldn't trade their position here anywhere, anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Nope. Which, which to me kind of goes to show that there is something to be proud of here in regards to what our country stands for and what our country is. And I always find it funny that when other people leave oppressed countries, I'll use a, a perfect example. You'll see people who fled from Cuba, uh -huh. right? And they will still wave their Cuba flag as proudful as anybody. As anybody, like they're out there, you're like, man, you love your country a lot. You know what I'm saying? But you left that country. That country wasn't good to you. Why are you so patriotic for that? I can't answer that. I'm not them. But that is what I see. Yeah. And it's like, man, you still rep your country, even though you knew. You couldn't do that for whatever reason, and you desired to come here. You, you just had to come part of the progress that I, my people made. I'm not saying their struggle was worse, greater, lesser, anything, but that does speak to something that I have to acknowledge in a sense. I could be oh, way off, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. No, no, um, no, no, no. You said a lot of good things. Um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so. You know, when 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 we talk about the history of our country, and it's, it is a complicated history, um, <clears throat> but when we talk about the history of our country and how it ties into our faith, I don't think there's, I think there's definitely a lot of, I I think there's some parallels between um, like the civil rights movement, African Americans fighting for equal rights, not just them, but there were Asians, there were people of, of Latin descent, right, um, in the civil rights movement. Um, yeah, I think we'll later on. <laughs> I want to change the topic. I view all those groups as piggybacking, but keep going. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so any, what I'm, I guess, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, um, um, I think specifically within our context as African American Lutherans, uh, in America, as of as of today in America, um, the the the, the American Lutheran Church for the most part is still predominantly like European. However, however, I see a narr I see the narrative that's changing. But the point I'm trying to make is that it, it requires courage for that narrative to change, right? Just like um just like you know, like the civil rights movement and before, the abolitionists before, the point I'm trying to make is that um if if this if this principles and this teaching and this doctrine is so rich to the point to where like Martin Luther King Jr. And his dad, Michael King, got their names changed, right? Mm -hmm. Um and and um and uh and, and Luther um you know he got his all his doctrine from the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. If these things are true, um and, and Martin Luther King, it is no coincidence that he was a born again believer and a Christian. And I'm I'm not gonna get into like his morals, but we know that he was a Christian that changed the world, right? Um I don't think that's none of that is a coincidence. 
And, and, and I think that um, what God is doing right now, I think it's going to impact generations, you know, further down the line that we can't see right now. But I think the whole point I'm trying to make is that if you know something to be right, whether it's your belief system or whether it's how people are, are treated in society, man, I don't care what it's fleshed out to be. I don't care what the packaging looks like. You need to go in that direction. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and so I think that's, that's what's happening with Lutheranism here in America. It's like, people are like, man, like, this is legit. Like, I'm moving in this direction, regardless of what it may look like or what I think it may look like. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to gird up my loins, so to speak, like the Bible says, and, and go that route. Yeah. And I think that's the, that's the issue. The degree in, in any of this stuff is like courage to do what's right. So. Yeah. And another topic that ties into it that I mentioned earlier, which we've seen go on for a while, and I'll be honest, I've avoided it, you know, is this, this nationalism conversation. Oof. And, and, and they call it Christian nationalism. Now, Ooh. I have a hard time with that phrase because when they talk Christian nationalism, when you look at the word Christian and nationalism, I don't see a problem with those two, you know. But I'm not, I don't believe in theocracy. And they really mean white nationalism when they say that. So I kind of have a grudge where it's like, call it that. Don't mm-hmm. drag Christian, the word Christian into it. But I think people know they get more traction based on using more Christian nationalism than white nationalism. But beyond that part, I was a little ranting. In regards to nationalism, like how would you define that? I would define nationalism as different than pa- patriotism in the sense that nationalism, um, I would say that, you know, you're, you're proud of your, your, fam- your, uh, your country and uh, your heritage, um, to a default. In other words, like it, it starts to get dangerous. It starts to get harmful. I think nationalism differs from patriotism in that sense. Like, like you're so, um, so pro America that like everybody else is inferior. For example, I'll just say this, like I used to, I used to get frustrated when uh, I would go to like Afghanistan or Iraq and some, not all, but some of our soldiers, some of our armed forces personnel in those countries would insist that the people learn English. And I'm like, okay, the world does not revolve around America. In other words, like, why don't you, you know, take a posture of humility and then learn the language of the country you're occupying? You know what I'm saying? Like, I look at it that way. And that, that wasn't everybody's attitude. Just, just, but some of the people that were, I, I would call them out. Yeah, I understand. I understand. See, I guess I would look at that as colonialism. Okay. More so than nationalism. So. Okay. And I'm not saying you're wrong definition-wise, but for, for me, when I view it, it's the, the first word you say, being proud of your country. You know what I'm saying? And I, let me mm-hmm. wrong, I do hate when people make church service about that. If y'all have been watching this channel before, we made it blatantly clear that we believe church is about Jesus Christ. Life, burial, resurrection, that should be the service. Okay, so let's move on. In regards to nationalism, I view it as a pride of, the, of a country. Of your country, wherever you're from. Same way I mentioned before about how Cubans and other people come here and they're fleeing horrible situations. Yeah. But they're still repping their country. They right. still have that pride of their country. You know? I mean, like for instance, I mean that that basketball player, uh, that 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 she him, I don't know what her pronoun is, but she, she looks like a buff dude, but I think she's Brittany Garner, Griner, her, right? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. She learned the hard way. Oh, man. Like, like she Super was, hard. She wasn't standing up for the anthem, but now she is. And oh, yeah. You, you went to another country, and the people who you hate so much, or the, the country you hate so much, was the ones that had to come and get you out. Oh, that's now, right. we're not talking about who they traded her for and snack. But my point is, is we talk all this and say all this, but then we... We go back and ask them, we're the land of freedom. You're supposed to love all your citizens. Come get me. No, you didn't even love us. So I, I understand why people say that. I'm not saying I, I feel that way about her. I have my own feelings. Some of them are that, you know. But nationalism, I think, is just a love of country it's on the word by itself. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So if we tie it together, it's like I have a hard time with this conversation because some people are tying race to it. That's wrong. This country has never been that. You know what I'm saying? Like, even when um, the horrible times of slavery and this and that, 
when they got here, it was already other people here. It's never been an all-white country or all this country. You might have been oppressing certain groups, and one group was in power. Okay, that's different, you know. But so I have a big problem with white nationalism. I'll say. But that doesn't mean you take the word white off and just nationalism in the sense of being proud of your country. I don't, I don't, so I kind of avoid that topic because also in our confession, how we um, kind of did, well, uh, Alfredo did it, but we respect the laws of the land and this and that. We, 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 at church, we pray for our leaders. Right. Democrat or Republican for people watching, like, don't get it twisted. I know some places. They'll do a prayer, almost condemnation, like this guy needs to fix his ways, this and this. Nope. But, when the, other, uh, but when the other side gets in, it's, oh, Lord bless him and continue his wisdom. No. Mm -hmm. Democrat, Republican, whoever, it's God, please pray. They, we pray for discernment for him and this and this. And this. You know what I'm saying? It, it doesn't That's change right. in a sense. You know? 100, 100. Right. So, I mean, like I said, nationalism is a hard topic, but... I do think, like, in our laws of the country, I think a lot of that falls in the first use of the law. Mm -hmm. And I have no problem with that. You see what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and I'm not saying it should be a the the uh, theocracy, but I have no problem with the laws on, on God's laws are written on our hearts. Christian yeah. or not, you know this is wrong or this is wrong. And I do want society to somewhat reflect that. So, like I said, it's just a big muddled puzzle when people tie race white nationalism and all this stuff in one pot and act like it's an easy recipe when it's like no listen as as a as a, a, a black male i have no problem i'm american when i leave his country i'm viewed as, as america i'm viewed as american and i do have, to have i do have some pride for it i'm not gonna go over there and start bashing our country knowing that i wouldn't i wouldn't move there i know what's going on there like no no, I, I do got some respect to put on their name over here. Yeah. Just, during this time, I don't see that. I don't see that respect. People take more pride in talking about the flaws of America than anything positive. Yeah, yeah, and that's a that's a great point. I think, man, a lot of it has to do with experiences. You know what I mean? Like, um, I'm gonna pause it and record again because it's getting kind of long. Okay.